as we get started, to check into Google Keep, it's just like we're used to. We'll get logged in to either Google or your email, whichever is easier. Hit the app grid, and then you can slide down, hit more, and then you'll see Google Keep. If you'd like to, you can also drag Google Keep up, and you can put it up with your other apps. So you might have to do it as a two-start process, slide it up, and then slide it up a little further. That way, the next time you hit your app grid, it'll be right there where you want to get it. So the first thing you're going to see when you get into Google Keep, it's going to talk about installing the Chrome extension if you would like to. Since last spring, Google has integrated Keep into more of its products, where before it was kind of like a standalone kind of post-it note looking product. So if you'd like to do that, you can, but you don't have to. We do have a couple things we're going to notice about Google Keep. It does start off with a little post-it uh, to look at the tools. It has a remind me. This is awesome. This is one of those other integrated tools. It will, if you stick a remind me on there, it will add that note to your Google Calendar. So if you do use Google Calendar, those are integrated together. So the remind me also saves it to your Google Calendar. You can collaborate. You can share your post-it notes with somebody else. So if I make a post-it note, uh, and I want to share it with one of my colleagues, another student, whoever, I can click collaborate just like I'm sharing a Google Doc. That person will have access to my note. I can also change the color of my note as I'm going along. We'll kind of play with that in a little bit. We can add an image to the note. So one of the cool things about Google Keep is it was originally designed for smartphones. So smartphones, tablets, it'll work on a smartphone, a tablet, Chromebook, personal computer, whether that's Windows, Linux, Mac, doesn't matter. So it'll work with all those. So we can add pictures into it. We can also archive. Now archive is one of those ways where we kind of hide it, but it still exists as opposed to deleting it where it goes into the trash can. If we click on the settings menu, that's where we can actually add a label. And when we add labels, that will put our information over here in the labels section where we can kind of have folders where we can have our our notes stuck in different categories. So if I'm a student and I want to use this instead of my agenda planner, I can use the labels to create my different class names. Then I can keep notes for a particular class. Every time I make a, a, a note, I add a label to it. Same thing with teachers. If I want to have it set for my classes, I can do that. Um, one for each class or however I'd like to delineate that. Also have the option of making a copy of a note um, and so forth. The next thing that's kind of cool is we have this little push pin. We can pin the note. That means that note will stay at the top of my list until I unpin it. Then it'll sort back down by date. Okay, to take a note, it's pretty much intuitive, so we get a title to the note. I have the title. Then I can either start making a list or I can set up just a regular note. Okay, the default is a regular note. So if it starts off that way, that's fine. Then I just type in my regular note. Okay, so I'm going to put my note on there, and then I can hit Done. So my note shows up. If I want to change the color in my note, I go ahead and make it blue. That's fine. Other colors available obviously are shown. It doesn't have a lot of colors because it needs, doesn't need to be very fancy. Next thing is maybe I want to share that note so I can go in and share that with somebody. And I'll go ahead and share that with myself since I'm in there as one of our professional development accounts. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to get rid of my tutorial note there. So anybody I'm shared with, it's going to show their little icon down in the bottom. So that's kind of nice. I also want to send myself a reminder. I want to make sure I remember this. It has suggestions. I can also pick a date and time. So if I want to pick tomorrow, and I want to remember that at 8 a.m., it's not going to repeat. I'm going to hit save. Okay, that's going to stick that on my calendar. So tomorrow I'll get a reminder at 8 a.m. Okay, if I want to take a new note, I go ahead and hit the note title. Now remember, it does have the option to put check boxes on there. So I hit the settings, show check boxes. And then I can make a list. I can add a few things on there. Okay, when I'm done, set it. Now, when I go back in to that note and I'm ready to check those off, yep, got my laptop, got my pen, got my calculator. I have my textbook. It crosses them off as I go. If I decide that I wanted to delete one, I can do that from over here on the side. Otherwise, go back in. Now, if I decide I want to go back into that note and say, you know what, I'm going to leave my calculator here. I uncheck it and done. Okay. It's handy to make a little check off list, handy to make uh, something that's, that's set up where you can add and subtract. Um, so after I have a couple things on there, if I want to add a label on there, remember I can go down to the more and I can add a label. Um, so on this one, say this is math class. I'm going to hit create math. Now I have a label over on the side. Okay, so that one's set up for math class. If this one is going to be home, put some home notes on there, it says create home, it's already there, okay, now if I do want, want to do another note, let's make this note from a student perspective, uh, let's call this quiz next Monday. I'm going to make sure that I pick a date and time, set up when my reading quiz is going to be. And I know we're off school that day, but that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and pick that anyway. And I can do custom, go ahead and set it. Whoops. Type it in, sorry. Uh, let's say it starts at 9, 10 a.m. Okay, so now I have the reminder. And I want to go ahead and set that up. I can add the label. Notice the labels I've already created are there. So if I want to set it in one of the labels that are already there, I hit the checkbox. If not, I create reading one. It's all set. Okay, the other cool thing about this is if I go over to my labels and I want to see just the math labels, it's just like looking at a folder view. It's going to give me just the post-it notes that are assigned to that label. If I don't assign any labels, any notes to that label, then it's going to be blank when it comes up. And if I want to see everything, of course, I go back to notes. If I want to see just the things with reminders on them, I go to reminders. Notes, it's going to show me everything. One of the cool features about using Google Keep is that we can do a note from something that's up on the board. So we can take a photo. It'll add that over to our Keep. And then after that photo is in there, we can click on the photo. And once we're on the photo, click on the little dots at the top grab the image text 
And after it's done spinning, it should pull that text down into the note. Okay, so you can see we've got all our, our text down in there. Google Keep is a great place to also do audio memos to yourself. So if you're in the app on your smartphone, all you have to do is hit the little microphone button, and then you can record your message yourself, and it'll go ahead and save it as a note. Another handy feature that would probably be make, make more sense to use on a, a smartphone is you can also go in and use the draw tool. So if you're using your smartphone and you need to do a quick note, you can just use the draw tool and jot down the note and get it in there and come back later and, and touch it up. So the draw tool is very handy. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out, remember we said this was integrated. If I go over to a Google Doc, let's just open up a Google Doc, anyone here? And I'm working on something as a student, as a teacher, whatever it may be, and I want to remember something, I can go down here to the Keep Notepad, and it's totally integrated in. My notes are going to pop up. I can take a note right there, and I can send myself some kind of reminder and notice that it's going to be attached to this document, so I'll remember that it's there. So, um, So I can tell it rough draft is due next class. Okay. And if I need to make any other kind of notations on that, I can either add it into the document or I can open it and keep whatever I want to do there. If I hit done, notice over on the other side, it has that note and then it has a label that links me over to the document. So it's got a quick way to get back to it. So very well connected back and forth. Now that you've had a little test drive of Google Keep, think about how you might use this in the classroom or maybe how your students might use this in the classroom to help stay organized. Um, there's also a lot of other ways you can use Google Keep, but this is just, like I said, a little test drive. If you'd like to see more about Google Keep, let me know. If you'd like me to come in your classroom, and talk to your students about the ways that they can use this in place of, a, of a, their student planner. By all means, invite me into your classroom. We'll set up the time, and I'll come in, and I'll, I'll work with them on it.